What's up, guys? This is episode 45 of the Mac Talks. And on this episode, we cover Tesla's new Cybertruck, Peloton's TV commercial blunder, and why changing careers midlife can be a great thing. Let's go. Chase, tell the people what the Mac Talks are. If you're an entrepreneur, impactful leader, or business owner, the Mac Talks are that vehicle that brings you the stories that you need to hear. That's right, real stories from real leaders. Check us out every Thursday. Welcome, everybody. Episode 45 of the Mac Talks. Not your conventional uh, business podcast, but uh, but we have fun and we get it done. <laughs> Co-host Chase Hutchison on the scene. If Say you, what up. If you guys even knew what it took to get to get you guys this podcast, then you would love it. Seriously. Sacrifice, blood, sweat, and tears. So, yeah, what Chase is talking about is yesterday we uh, we actually recorded this jammy and uh, and uh, the cameras cut out. So we have to redo it. Yeah. So if we seem a little impatient, um, that's because we are. Right? We got to switch gears from, you know, basically not panic mode, but just like, you know. Yeah. So having we, a rough morning to all of a sudden now we got to, you know. So yesterday we just got to so change positive. gears. Yesterday we were super duper duper positive. Um, and today we're going to need to get it back on the positive. Well, we didn't start. We're not starting so positive. No, we had right? a rough morning. All right. So what was some of the 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 um, the in-house stuff that we needed to cover? So we talk a little bit about sales here. Um Oh, yeah, we were speaking about your rectal client. But, yeah, so but we don't need to copy it exactly, but, yeah, we were speaking about a, a, a rectal client. Um, we did a pitch, and uh, Scott refers to him as the rectal client, but really the full name is Colon and Rectal Surgeons of Greater Hartford. But it's just easier to say rectal, but it's also just weird. I keep asking him how his rectal client's doing. And, uh, yeah, we didn't get it. But, anyway, we got lots more on the plate. We're plugging away. We're trying to hit some of these uh, some of these goals that we have set up. And, uh, you know, we also spoke about our video department, uh, you know, how going we through kinda, a big change. Yeah. How we turned a new leaf, um, turned the page. What's the, some more, give me some more sayings. What, what uh, you, you know, know, started a new leaf. I don't know. That's yeah, it. I'm yeah, out. I'm done. New chapter. <laughs> new, you know what I mean? Um, it's good though, because, um, you know, we got some great new people in and, um, you know, I feel like we can learn from a lot of the mistakes that we've made in the past um, yeah. with these new people and, and hopefully grow a new culture in there. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, like anything, you know, I, I feel it's going to be maybe a small step, small step backwards. But I do feel that we're going to take uh, multiple steps forward uh, in, a, in a relatively quick time. Um, so that's my thoughts on that. What else? Before well, we jump um, it? it's the holidays. Obviously, uh, yeah, we're in it's December. cold as shit outside. It's really That's why cold. I have this hat on. There's there's snow out there, and um, but also it's the end of Q4, which means that we're wrapping up and we're in we're in a race to the finish line, um, and and one of the great ways to retain the business you already have um, or bring in new business is to send a little a little note, a little you know a little treat, or, or something. you can go above um, and beyond for like we do. And you can drop a fruit basket on them. Yeah. Like one of those edible arrangements. Exactly. Those crush, by the way. Or a little bucket of brownies from Stu's. Shout out to Stu Leonard Jr. He did the... Uh, he talks like this. The, <laughs> dude, we're trying to get him on the All right, show. But Don't he's... Worry. I love Bro, him. You're not his, helping story out. Is, his story is It's a good thing that amazing. Stu doesn't listen to this podcast. And to be honest with you, what he said was, how do you make it to the podcast? That's actually what he said um, when I spoke to him briefly. Um, it was pretty genuine funny guy. though. Great Very guy. genuine. Great guy. I like that guy. Love he's him. he's a lovable, huggable, funny guy that loves talking about platters um, and different types of milk and just how times are changing. And Stu's is changing <laughs> with the times. He's like, well, nowadays they've got almond milk, you know. And he's like talking about and that about blows the his mind. Yeah, he's, he's, like, like, he's like, what? I used to milk. milk cows, and now you got <laughs> almond milk. So, um. That's cool. Uh, we He's also, in the Connecticut Business Hall of Fame. He definitely is, without a doubt. He's up there with uh, Bob. Bob's discount. And Larry. Sure. And, Larry. and Larry. Who we've had on the show. Yes. He's a goat. Royalty. Royalty. Uh, we also spoke about how, um, you know, my wife turned 44, and we went and got some wings, 
and they give you 44 wings that cover two. Yeah. And I ate about 40 of them. That's crazy. And my wife had about four of them. Yeah. No, she probably had maybe six. So yesterday, my stomach wasn't feeling so well. Um, Still cranked off a, a podcast, though. <laughs> yes. Yes. Definitely did. Um, <laughs> but all right, cool. Well, let's uh, let's jump into some of these topics. Um, you know, I got I to gotta sell some shit after this. I got an appointment coming up. Um. All right. And uh, we got a busy day, so. All right, so I'll, I guess I'll bring us into um, the rundown. Uh, everybody knows what the rundown is at this point. Basically, uh, big stories, um, big news stories from, um, the, you know, the business section. Um, and we're going to cover those. We're going to break them down for you. So a lot of really interesting stuff this week. So uh, let's jump right in. Yes, sir. Topic number one of the rundown. called career changes all right so there's a a woman by the name of lisa congdon who spent years in the education nonprofit industry she even started her own nonprofit but midway through her career she decided to become an artist she took her first art class at 30 and by 39 she left her job in education for art now she has over 300,000 followers on instagram and her art has been featured in the moma which is the moma modern museum the Museum, uh, Museum of Modern, of Modern Art. Art. Yeah, Museum of Modern Art. And uh, that's just a great honor. Um, it's incredible that she made that big of a stride in such a short amount of time. So, you know, I like to say that I can kind of compare myself to this story to a certain extent. Um, you know, I ran a business that was obviously nothing to do with what I do now. But, you know, mm-hmm. they have a little more similarities to what I'm doing which is kind of, she does it. She went a kind of completely different direction, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, she did a 360, or yeah. 180. Yeah, so um, I think that's awesome. You know how Gary always says that shit. You know, it's Gary, never too late, guys. It's never too late. Scott decided to start Mac Media when he was 37. 37. And, and that's not too late. That's young. That's young. 37, you still got a lot of... So could we afford any of her art? I'm going to say no. No, unless she's doing pro bono stuff, then we're we're probably SOL. Shit out of luck. You don't think she's going to design us a new like Mac Move sign or anything like that? I don't That's know. Not we really could reach her out. I would love really... to commission her for a mural, you know, out there. Yeah. Keep, keep adding to the wall. I don't think we can. Uh, but I don't think we can afford that. I definitely that. know we can't afford it. But that's awesome. Uh, what would you say? She's got 300,000 Instagram followers. Yep. Um, so go check her out. And, uh, you know, I think this is a great story. Yeah, it's always great when somebody can, you know, do a 180 and and be successful. Yeah, I think it's awesome. It's entrepreneurship at its finest. All right, topic number two. (laughs) Topic number two, uh, it's called More Jobs Pay Less. So a new study published by the Job Quality Index indicates that the U.S. economy is churning out jobs at an alarming rate, which is good. Uh, but the market isn't so hot in terms of pay and stability. 63% of all jobs created since 1990 were low-wage, low-hour jobs. It means they're either part-time or minimum-wage um, style jobs. The thing I love about this article is that um, it gives you a job quality index, which I would like to know a little bit more about, job quality index. Um, it obviously has to do with the type of job that it is, type of pay that it is, those type of things. Mm-hmm. Um so job quality index back in like 90, 1990, 95 was up at like, a, it was in the 90s. Job quality index in 2020, it looks like it's hovering around 80. So where is the job quality index when your boss allows you to have a couple beers at lunch on a Friday? Like you get. Your job quality index is in the hundreds. Uh, it, it's it's up there. It's in the hundreds. It's up there. It wasn't in the hundreds this morning, but it's usually in the hundreds. Is it not? Yeah. I think that it is. I think that it is. But so the point of this whole thing is that there's a lot of, you know, um, I mean, they're probably more labor intent, like not labor, in, like, right? Labor intensive type of jobs. Yeah. Retail. It's, yeah. Retail stuff like that. So the point is like, I guess Trump and, you know, the Republican administration and, and everybody's talking about how it's opening up new jobs, jobs and how it's jobs great for the con- economy. And that's kind of true. But also, they it's a jobs. lot of crappy jobs. Yeah. Um, 
but you can't say you can't work. Yes, there's that's work what I was getting there. to. There's you work can't, out there's there. no excuse anymore. Yes. There's a million jobs. Yes. So, but yeah. get out there and get Trump's a job. Trump's creating <laughs> shitty jobs. That's great. But they're jobs. But and it jobs helps. Jobs. I think it helps. But it's a, probably just a short-term solution to a long-term problem. My thing is this: we these people that jobs. run these large companies that are spending all this money are going to implement the robots into this industry of these lo- low-paying jobs that are that a robot can do. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. a little later on, we're going to be covering a topic about robots actually being able to have skin and feeling it like feeling sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not down with that, by the way, that's happening. Well, that's later on in the show. All right. Um, if that's happening, right. Yeah. They're definitely going to have a robot that can stock a shelf. Yeah. And I'm sure they already have going one to be already, dude, one somewhere. There's going to be one person that's meant to, in case something gets stuck in the robot or something like a supervise, that. A robot supervisor. But that, but, no, but the robot is going to be in charge of that employee, though. I firmly believe that, though. I don't think that's... I, I think I, so. I, I think we're screwed if that happens. I think it's going to happen. I don't think so. I think so. it's going to happen. I, I mean, we're talking about these jobs, dude. You know the type of jobs these, these jobs are. Let's not... Let's not hold... Right, but there can never... Standard. We can never hold a robot. Then why wouldn't we just have a robot he's as He's not our, in charge of the whole entire government. corporation. <laughs> Bro, no, because he's going to control the... The the one employee. I'm cool with robots like telling you what to do. That's like most efficient. So they're like run here and run there. And you know, I'm saying the robot would be in charge of the location. He's not in charge of McDonald's. It's not like McDonald's now has a CEO. The robot. robots. That's what I'm trying to tell you. The ro- the robots not making like like fiscal like deci- it's making it's Nobody just trying to that. maximize efficiency. I'm just saying the robot is going to be in charge of the people because the robot will think the way. All right, you want me to agree with you? I agree with you. All, All right, right. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Cool. Um. So that's good. We got jobs out there. We got jobs out there. Granted, it's hard to live off of twenty thousand dollars a year, but you know, there's jobs out there. Live with your parents. Live with your rents, bro. Live with your rents. All right. Live out of your car. What do we got? <laughs> Topic number three. <laughs> a Netflix and chill Thanksgiving. Um, and this is all about how um, the Thanksgiving domestic box office is down sixteen percent from last year. Uh, due to streaming services like Netflix and Disney Plus, which have awesome new shows, people are blaming uh, Martin Scorsese's The Irishman in particular, which kept a lot of people out of the theaters this weekend. Um, last weekend, it would have been. I watched it. Did you watch it? Yeah, it was too long, but it was good. It was long as shit. Um, but yeah, it was definitely good. It was like, I didn't know it was three hours and 30 minutes because I watched it, you know, the Thanksgiving. It came out the night before, right? Yeah. So I didn't, I didn't hear everybody bitching or saying how long it was. But it was kind of a marathon. I, I don't think it needed to be that long. Um, but that's not actually the point in this topic. The point in this topic is, uh, is Netflix going to shut down movie theaters? Is streaming services going to shut down movie theaters? And the answer is, yeah. I think somewhere in the middle. I think it's got to be a more of an experience. Like going to the movies, is, it's got to it's got to cash in more on the experience. So they got to make... Reclining, heating, air conditioned chairs. Uh, put a bar in there. E, I don't know. I'm not. Hey, goes. I'm not. I'm not a movie theater, you know, manager. But I think that they manager. need to find ways of, <laughs> of drawing people in. Um, and I think it's still going to be a niche industry, but it's just it's going to start to yeah, it's going to start to die. They're going to start closing movie theaters. So I know that this was actually out in theaters, right, for a few weeks. Mm-hmm. But it was selected theaters. Yeah, I think it was. Out I think the November theaters were like, "Screw your movie. We don't. We're not." You know what I mean? Like, because it wasn't in anything that I saw. It wasn't in over here in Danbury. Lowe's and there wasn't yeah. in that Lowe's, boy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that uh, I think that uh, this is obviously the future. Um, I think that people, you know, when when they start, I mean, this is the first year that it really, really happened. Like yeah. it's gonna continue to happen. And like you, you can think... guarantee that next year, or even come Christmas, probably same shit. They're gonna start dropping movies like Amazon, and they're, that's when they're gonna, and that's when the theaters are in some shit. When it happened, when it's because it's gonna keep happening. I mean, look yeah. how look how much success it was. So what was the percentages down? What like fourteen percent? Sixteen. Sixteen percentiles. A lot of people have it as their family tradition to go to the movies and watch a movie around Christmas time and around Thanksgiving. Yeah, and um, that's typically when they see ticket sales. When I was a little boy down up. in Delaware, we used to do that, and we actually used to take the Thanksgiving leftovers with us. 
Really? I used to sit there and suck on a big old turkey bone as I was watching a movie. Really? Yeah. That's, that's what we used to do. kind of gross. Well, we're white trash. We were down in Delaware, so. So there's cranberry sauce all over the seats in Delaware? Yeah. In the movie theaters? Yeah. Don't even, and also, uh, let's not, I'm not going to get started on my whole Netflix is going to go out of business. No, I know. Right? I was actually hoping that so you were So I'm not going to, but I want to acknowledge that I'm not thank doing you, that. Thank you. Thank you. Why is my, is my phone be buzzing over here? Um. Thank you for not doing that. I, I truly appreciate you. Um, all right, so that's that topic. Uh, the Irishman, Martin Scorsese. Um, go see it. Go see it. Uh, <laughs> and uh, put put the movies out of, out of the business. Make your own little movie theater at home. Yes. Yeah, with your man cave. All right. Next all right. topic. Topic number four. <laughs> Cyber Monday. The numbers are in. Uh Total sales nine point four billion, most of all time. Holy shit! All right, that's smokes. one. That's one. First day in history, people spent three billion from their phones. Holy smokes! That's two. At its peak, consumers were spending eleven million dollars per minute. That's nuts. We <laughs> we got a soundboard, and uh, Scott's really happy about it. Yeah, I'm really happy about it. We're still working out some kinks, but but we have a soundboard. Um. Those are big numbers. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Uh, why don't you run through some of the um, the winners? So the it's toys. It's always it's yeah, toys. It's toys. Who the hell is buying toys a month before Christmas? These people. <laughs> Seriously. Well, um, now because they're getting the they best get them deal, a better, best deal, the best deal. And my parents are a part of these. I didn't personally do it, but you know, I can tell you. My parents are all about you it. You know what's really funny, though? I feel like older people are the ones who are really buying on these all right. days. Everybody, this is a little bit of switch of a That's top. just switching, the, up the, uh, switching up the topic for a though. quick second. But you know how there's remarketing, mm-hmm. correct? You go, you look at something on Amazon, you go to your Facebook, it shows up. You go to uh, New York Post, it shows up, right? Because they're remarketing you that product. What happens when your kid uses your computer and then they see that, that you're being remarketed? They know that you're getting that, correct? Or they think you're getting it and then they get let down at Christmas. Yeah. See, that's the type of shit with the times that change that these people, they don't understand. You got to clear your cookies, boy. Yeah. You got to clear your cookies so little Jimmy doesn't know. Yeah. Right? I never thought about that. Right? Yeah. Those are true facts right there. Those Don't are the let things. your kids use your, your devices, number one. I would never. Be cool. Pretty damn you... cool. <laughs> <laughs> who is that? That's Steve tell, Ballmer. Tell me who it is. That's Steve, Steve Ballmer. Ballmer. He's the man. We've got a few of him in here. He's one of our he idols. He is our man. Um, you know, and then we got, we've got, of course, we've got. <laughs> Kawhi. We've got Kawhi in here. Um, we've got. I'm a fun guy. Some more Kawhi. I'm a fun guy. I'm a fun whoa, guy. Whoa, he's a really fun whoa, guy. Whoa, Kawhi, settle down. It's big time, Tommy. Wow, big time, Tommy. That shit is loud as shit. Boy. Steve Ballmer, you don't even know it, but you keep the morale up in this office. You do, buddy. You do, especially you around the, the holidays when everybody's mm-hmm. hustling and bustling. Yeah. All right, um, so back to the, but, the topic. At so hand. okay, top selling products: Frozen Two toys, the Nintendo Switch, VR devices, Nerf products, and video games. So yes, it's all toys, and um, and Cyber Monday is really the day to to get the best deal. Out. I would say, like I was saying, I think if you track this, it's all people like who are parents who are buying. It has to be on Cyber Monday. It has to be. Um, but yeah, so people buy a lot of shit on Cyber Monday. That is the that's the point here, right? Record breaking. Mm-hmm. It's the most sale online sales of all time, which is notable. I mean, it's people don't go. Remarkable. So let's just let's cover the last two topics. People do not go to the movies. They stay home and they watch the movie. People do not go to the store. They stay home and they order the shit. We're right? going to be some antisocial people. That's what yeah. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But we're going to get our, we're going to be buying shit very easily. I think that's the plan. Mm-hmm. Um, but all right, cool. So that's that topic. What, what do we got? What's next? Topic number five. <laughs> Uh, we're calling it tiny loaves in the death of the all you can eat buffet. So Gen Z and millennials are calling for smaller portions of baked goods, including bread loaves. A survey says averse to food 
waste, the young shoppers are joining the growing ranks of people who live alone. Many of them already prefer buying half loaves. Shoppers don't mind paying a slight premium for products that are slightly more manageable. Yeah, thoughts on this? Um, it's it's a change in culture, I think. Um, a change in, in human behavior. You know, people are living by themselves and they don't need, um, you know, they don't need these large portions that just go to waste anyway. But my point is, like, if you're averse to food waste, it's it's bread, though. It's yeah. biodegradable. Still I think cost fo- money. food, I don't think, okay, here's my mistake is that I don't think this is an environmental thing as much as it's a privilege and like there are people starving out there and you're not finishing your food type of argument. Yeah. It's not an environmental. No, argument. I think it's a portion thing. Yeah. It's, it's a, I think it's a, I think why it's are we portion. throwing away all this food and you know what I mean? No, but I also think it's a portion thing. It's like, we're just so used to consuming more portion. They're going to give us less portion. We're going to get used to it. I think that's what it is too. Right. That's what it seems yeah. like the main thing is because if you look at you right here, um, the Kimpton hotel, Monaco in Portland, Oregon, stopped offering free bread with its meals at its Red Star Tavern restaurant. Four months into the experiment, the hotel noticed it used 22 fewer pounds of dough and 65 fewer pounds of butter a month. Bro, that's a, I don't know, that that butter to bread comparison seems a little crazy. Yeah, isn't that weird? <laughs> Shouldn't it be the other way around? <laughs> Dude, you cannot do the sound effects, bro. Come on. I you I don't do have a soundboard, sound so I know. But you just can't like right. <laughs> You know what I mean? You just can't do them. Um so okay. then it says that um it says that uh bread was still offered for a small charge, but if gas bulked they would get it for free. Not many complained. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I mean, it, so if you bulk at the bread and you get it for free, then if you bulk at the dessert, do you get that for free? And my other thing is this. Portland, Oregon, where all the stoners are, where all the stone people are, they get they smoke a couple dubs before they walk in. They want bread and they probably want it right away. Nice warm bread. Nice, we nice would. melted butter. I don't know. The people in Oregon are different. They're different. They're bro. different, bro. They're different. They're not like us. But I mean, I don't know. I guess give me my goddamn bread. You know what I mean? Like, don't charge me for bread. How much are they charging for bread anyway? Well, you can just balk and you'll get it for free. Then I'm gonna start balking at everything. I'm balking, bro. Dude, that's what I'm saying. You get me balking, dude. Dude. You don't want to get me balking. Dude. Don't I'm get like this Jim Jones. Balking. I'm balking, bro. You don't want to be doing that. All right. Balling. What's the next topic? Um, that's it for the rundown. Oh! In case you didn't know, that was five. That's five. I don't know how to count. Um, now it's time for which we definitely need some sort of a uh, a sound effect for this, which we don't, which we don't have. But it would be uh, it would be pretty sweet if we um, did. It would be like this. Ah. No, you're not supposed to play that one. It. We got it. That's my favorite sound. Yes, yes. So that's our boy, Eddie. He's in the soundboard. What's good, Eddie? Eddie, you made it into the soundboard, bro. You made it. Yes, yes. There you are. Eddie's going to come on the Shout show. Shout out to Eddie. Eddie is going to come on the show soon enough. Um, we got to reach out to him and get him on. Right? Okay. Yeah. All right. It's time for Mac Move on, or Whack Move. <laughs> We're, uh, you know, uh, a couple things I want to say about uh, Mac Move or Whack Move whenever we do it. Um, I'm just fired up to be here today. I just, you know, I just perk up. These sounds are just blowing out my eardrums. <laughs> we got to regulate these Steve sounds. But I get it. Tommy and Kevin have only been working on the soundboard for, si- I think, uh, four days. I get it. We're working it out, though. We're going to get it. By the sixth day, we're going to get it. I feel it. I can feel it. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So, Mac Mover Whack Move. Um, go ahead, Chase. Run us down. All right. Mac Mover Whack Move. So, as you guys know, uh, we're going to bring up some some fun products, services, um, you know, things in the news again. But uh, And we're going to give you our take, Mac Mover Whack Move. Pretty self-explanatory. And yeah. we're going to jump right into topic number one. Um, 
everybody's buzzing about this and it this happened you know two three weeks ago and people are still talking about it the cyber truck the tesla the cyber truck cyber truck um so elon musk uh reveals their new addition to the tesla lineup and that is the cyber truck uh set to compete with you know brands like ford and chevy um and dodge um but while he was uh presenting the truck at the reveal uh, he threw a metal ball at the window to test its durability. And it broke, and it wasn't supposed to break. Yeah. So originally, everybody was saying that, uh, you know, this was done on purpose because it made everybody talk about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that that was true at first. Um, but, you know, after seeing some time go by and hearing that the reason why it broke was because they hit it with the sledgehammer first, that, that I guess messed up the glass, and then they threw it. They should have threw the ball first and then hit the thing, right? So it, like, weakened it. My thing is this. Aren't they smart enough to figure that out? Like, they're smart. Like, they're, he's trying to go to the, you know, he's trying to take us to space. Yeah. Shouldn't you be figured out how to do this demo? I'm really nervous about his first ride up there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I'm a little nervous. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, we forgot to, uh, you know. Roll the windows up. <laughs> <laughs> we, forgot to, <laughs> we forgot to turn off the flux capacitor. You know what I mean? Like, just some basic shit. Like, um, that's basic shit. Really, it is. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the car, though, itself, just real quick, um, before we give our takes. So, uh, it's steering fully electric. Wheels whack. Steering wheel's whack. Steering wheel's whack. Okay, Scott doesn't like the steering wheel. It's like a bow tie. Yes. So, there's two handles and there's no top. How do you bottom. drive with your knee? Yeah, I don't drive. Yeah. Not that I do that. Well, you don't have to in this car because, oh, because it's, it's a self-driving self car. Okay. Uh, it's fully electric. It's good for the environment. It also has, it can go zero to 60. It's got torque, right? Does it have torque? It has torques. I've heard it has torques. It has torques. torques. It has torques. Oh, mad torques. Yeah, more torques. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. More torque. So, uh, it goes zero to 60 in sub three seconds sometime. Um, so which is very, very fast. Uh, and it, it also has more pull capacity than um, than Ford and um, Chevy rivals. Uh, so it can pull a, a Ford truck or a Chevy truck uphill while while that truck is trying to pull it downhill. So it's very powerful. Do you know how people refer to their trucks as rigs? Yeah. Could you refer to this as a rig? And this goes to our conversation last night. Uh, no. So we had a very lengthy... It's a cyber rig. Very aggressive conversation last night while we were watching the football game about whether an electric car can be a muscle car. It can't. It can. There's no such thing as an electric muscle car. Like, well, even if there was such a right, thing... All right, so then let me ask you this then. Can you call the cyber truck a rig? No. Well, then... So, so just to be clear, then, <laughs> it's, it's so not it a can, it's it's more powerful than a rig. A rig implies rig. like a diesel engine and like like an exhaust that comes out the That's top. A rig, yeah. And those those dualies, yeah. Them dually hitters on the back, yeah. I and this is not that. In the back. Um, um, last thing, it's forty thousand dollars. Cost effective. You're excited. You want to see these things out there. Right? Yeah, I do. You're I want to see him on the road, man. I'm so super what are you excited. going with? A Mac move or a whack move? A Mac this move. Freaking truck. Mac move, guys. I mean, I guess I'll go with. Uh, I guess I I feel a little pressure here from you because I know you love the guy. And oh, I also hey, bro. wanted to do our judgment free. I'm gonna go Mac move, which means <laughs> that's what that means. So, um, yeah. Mac move. Mac move. All right, topic number two, guys. This rolls off the back of the last topic quite nicely. Ford, and this is really what started the whole This is argument. what started the whole and, entire uh, and, thing. And, and I'll explain night. that, but let's cover it real quick. Ford in, unveils electronic um, Mustang to compete with Tesla for performance-based electric cars. And so, guys, I want to reiterate this because nobody seems to understand. This is not a muscle car this is not a you know a, any sort of drag racing you know not your traditional mustang this is different than anything that they've ever done this is an suv it's called the mach e and uh it's it looks sexy as hell uh it's fast fully electric listen it, it mustang is not are they trying to like change the mustang like it's just a different car like it's a mustang under the mustang brand but it's an suv I don't know. It's just weird. Like, 
That's just weird to me. It, it is weird, but I. They're trying. Cool. What they're trying to do is this. They're I trying love to the make car. the Mustang brand Sexy like like the Jordan Flight brand, where it's like they're Nikes, but now they're they used to just be shoes that Jordan wore, but now there's, you know, Travis Scott Jordans, and there's this guy Jordans, and there's Drake Jordans. No, but it, it a be. more apt to, a, a more apt comparison, comparison would be um, if Jordan started making like loafers. Which I think they they do they do yeah yeah so that's really the comparison sales. yes yeah, yeah, so yeah. different shoe I got gotcha. you it's a different car but it's under the same brand and it's a different demographic that likes to be old school pack some chew and tobacco yeah I think it's a hybrid fucking punch it hybrid demographic yeah no I'm not I'm not down with it I think that's stupid Mac move whack move I want an electric car by the whack way move. this is why I'm so biased whack towards like move. Tesla so I really want an electric car yes you do eventually but now in you my got life. a Subaru which I love Subaru I, I love, love it I tells everybody car. it's I call it my everybody. stormtrooper people get in his you car he's saying? like you like my new car it's 2000 because they <laughs> always God, he did it last night I do it all the my time my boy got in the car and he goes hey Sean <laughs> do you like my car you like my no, car, bro? He I just said, got he it, bro. complimented my car. And then I said, oh, you hey. like my car? Yeah, he did. When he got in, he goes, this is a nice car. But then we cut him I off. Think you, I think you we cut, no, I think you just got I didn't off. start it. I know. What um, I Mac Move, guys. Um, I love this car. Uh, all right. Topic number three. <laughs> McDonald's is testing a chicken sandwich to compete with Popeyes and Chick-fil-A. I really wanted to replace this with um, Pablo Escobar's brother has a cell phone company. Yeah. And he says he's going to put Apple out of business. And if I were Apple, I'd be shitting my pants. And I'm not saying that. Because you think their I'm product is I'm not saying that because they have better cell towers, if you know what I'm <laughs> saying. I'm saying it because, you know. I mean, if the mob can kill Kennedy, then. Then, yeah. Then the cartel the is. The cartel can kill yes. Tim Cook. Yes. CEO of Apple. Whack them. No, they'll just take them out. Like, you know, like how the mob, how they like bomb things. That's what they would do. They would just, you know. Yeah. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about the chicken sandwich. Yes. And, you're right. Um, you're right. We're not talking about We're that. not talking about that. We're talking about the chicken sandwich. Uh, crispy chicken sandwich. They're testing in McDonald's. Houston, Knoxville. I move. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the sandwich features a fried chick fil chicken filet served on a buttery potato roll topped with butter and pickles. The deluxe version also I'm going to still exists. say they already have this sandwich. I've had a chicken sandwich at McDonald's that had pickles on it. And it was called Buttermilk Crisp, whatever the fuck it was called. Yeah. So I don't know if you're pulling this article up from like, you know. No, this is I'm just joking. Monday, December 2nd. I'm just kidding. But um, do they got a spicy chicken hitter? Because that's really all they need to really do, right? No. No spicy chicken um, hitter. You're late to know. the game, McDonald's. But the, like, it's like these companies are going to war with each other. I tell you what, though, I fast it's, food. It's so cool. Fast food. I, I'm really digging the way fast food places are doing their advertising and how they attack each other. I'm I'm digging that. Yeah, they're going like, to war. Like, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if I there like were some that fights. more than I like their food. You know to be I mean? honest. Popeye's employees and Chick fil A employees meet at night yeah. in someone's basement and they beat the shit out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's. Nobody's dying for a, chick a chicken sandwich from McDonald's. All right. People are gonna die for the one from Popeyes, though. You know what I mean? Like you, you tell somebody, you know, there are people out there. They'll, you know, they'll go get a chicken sandwich. They catch a body. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> especially if you know. Oh, um, you holding up that line? What are you going with? Mac move. I mean, you got to join the war. I mean, McDonald's. That's I'm just not gonna... bullshit. You're just hardcore about your McFlurries. So all right, that's why. Well. I'm a fun guy. I can't wait to try it. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, bro. I hear you. All right, you want to move on? Yeah, let's move on because McDonald's is just like Ford. I'm not down with either one of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, this is topic number four. Uh, so <laughs> Scientists last month unveiled an artificial skin that enables robots to feel yes, yes. and respond to physical contact. We kind of already touched on this, but this is this is some whack shit. This is some whack shit. All right, I don't want, I don't want, I don't think that we should build robots that mimic like like the the sensory things that we're capable of. Like I said, a robot should be a box, like this. God, you're so And it old. just and it just all it does is it just it just makes you efficient. This is and that's, if, that's if I said that if I said that your response would be okay, boomer. That's what you would say to me if I said that. <laughs> 
No. It should be a box. You realize what you're saying? Dude? I'm not. It's not about. Look what's in your this is not an look age what's in thing. front of you. This is not. An, yeah, I love it. Box? I love like, it. Keep it as a brick. Why can't it be a I moving? Want bricks. Why can't it be a moving robot that just can't feel? Yeah, as long as it's a, a brick with wheels. All right. It's a box with wheels. I'm cool um, with that. This one's tough for me. I don't know, like because you know where they're going with this. You know where they're going with this, right? Mm. You know where they're going with this. There's a lot of lonely men out there. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. You know where they're going with yeah. it. Yeah. And it's a good, you know. Maybe that's good. I don't know. I'm gonna say probably it's probably not, not good. Yeah, I'm gonna say probably not. So I'm gonna go whack move. Yeah, whack move on that. One. Um, I don't think that we should make robots like us. I think we should, <laughs> we should just make workers. You know, robotic workers. Yeah, I agree. All right, are you ready to move on? Any, right. Anything else? No. Okay. I'm ready. All right. Uh, I'm a fun guy. <laughs> 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 All right. Topic number five. Cinco. Peloton's market value dropped by 942 million. Oh, we got to play this one. Hold on. During a widely mocked ad. And actually, it's funny. We were watching football last night and they played that. They're still running the shit out of that ad. All right. Well, let's be clear that. I think you know someone that has one. The article. I do. Perry. The article makes it seem like it's because of the. Um, the ad, but it's not. It's not because of the ad that the stock is dropping. I don't think. It's because I'm people sure are it's helping compute. a little. But all right, let's give you more context. Uh, the ad We're features a young it. woman being gifted by a, a bike. Um, people are saying that the ad is confusing, sexist, and classist. I don't. I personally don't have a problem with it. Um, and I think that if you were to bring in a thousand people. None of them would say that they have a problem with it. I don't even know that anybody truly has a problem with it. This is one of those things where I feel like the media and just people in general can drive this story by talking about it. And by like people are saying this is so stupid, but they're talking about it. But yet it's not. I don't know. I can't see how this can bother people. Like I would love to have somebody explain to me how this is offensive. It's journalists looking for clicks is what I think it is. I think it's journalists that's going to write the next article that's going to blow up. Do you up, know what I think it is? And they're just looking for clicks. So Perry tells me they that don't actually a lot of people are way. shorting the shit out of this company, which I don't know why. So a lot of people are shorting it. Maybe it's the people that are shorting it. Maybe the people that are shorting it. Because you got to imagine, there's people that have serious money when they go in and short something. They definitely can plant stories. And we're just stupid ass society nowadays where we just believe every single thing that we see on our Facebook page. But this is actually, it's funny because I just feel like they just took something that's not an issue and they made it an issue, but yet nobody really thinks it's an issue. But yet everybody's talking about how people think it's an issue, but I don't think there's anybody out there that actually does. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't think that anybody could possibly think this is an issue. Uh, I'm going to go as far as to say this. And this might be a little controversial. That's like some conspiracy theory shit. I just think it's, I just think that there's a bunch of uh, journalists that are looking for clicks and want to blow up their article and be reactionary. Maybe. And then people just ride off of that. And for the life of me, I can't understand why you would put your money down. uh, And and so like you read an article like this and you're like, I'm going to short it now. No, they were already shorting it. Before the ad came out. Yeah, they were already, it was already I, like a bunch of investors have been shorting this stock. Like they're like, we're going to take these fuckers up. So they're shorting them because they think it's overvalued. So when everybody starts jumping on shorting it, then it starts to come down. And then they said, let's, let's, let's go with this story. My point is this, and this might be somewhat controversial, but I wouldn't have a problem. You know, she was a skinny, she, the commercial, the girl was skinny. She kept riding the bike. She, she was already athletic. She didn't lose any weight or anything like that. My point is, because that's what people are upset about. I wouldn't even be upset if the person was overweight. I wouldn't care. What's wrong with that? You want your loved one to be healthy. What's wrong with that? I get it if you're sitting on the couch and you're eating fried mozzarella sticks with your stomach hanging out like I was last night. You know what I mean? Like, I get it. <laughs> you're an asshole if you do that. But, like, what's wrong with a husband buying his wife, like, some exercise equipment so she can actually be healthy and be in good shape? Yeah. 
Well, the, the, what's wrong with the that? The sticker price on this thing is like twenty five hundred dollars or twenty nine hundred. Like it's it's like it's a an lot expensive of money. coat rack, is what but it it's is. dope. All right. So anyway, needless to say, let's do a bit on this. Let's get a piece of shit stationary bike, right? Let's let's take a tablet. We'll put it on the front of it, right? We'll record me cheering on Carla. We'll, no, we'll have Tommy put a wig on. Yeah, yeah, and he'll yeah, ride yeah. it, and then we'll have like like yeah. Carla come out at the end or like yeah. something. You know, it'll be good. And I'll be sitting on the couch eating mozzarella sticks. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Dunking them mozzarella stick. I get a little keep that little thing of sauce right on my belly button. It'll hold it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Peloton. Um you in some So what's shit. the Mac move or whack move though? Like what is the question? The question is The question is, is about the commercial. Is is the commercial Mac move or whack yeah. move? That's a Mac move. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have any problems with it. I think it's a I, good commercial. Yeah. I got no problem. Dude, shit, it, dude. I hope I get to a point where I have enough money to where I can buy my girlfriend like a $3,000 piece of exercise equipment. And you know what? No one's going to care. And she keeps it tight. Whoa. No one's going to care, bro. No one's going to care. Um, All right. All right. That concludes Mac Move or Whack Move, guys. Scott, is there anything you want to cover? Uh, that's really it? You that's five chat? topics? Yeah, that's five topics, man. Holy shit. We just blasted quick. through that. I got an 1130 appointment. Could you guys? How about you? What do you got going could on? Could you guys tell that? Well, I got a three thirty, but which is kind of late in in the day for a Friday for me. <laughs> By three thirty, bro, I'll be about four beers deep. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I do want to say I though that stick um, around. I hurt my back. Old man Johnson hurt his back. Haven't been to the gym in a horrible funk, eating like shit, hanging out with these young guys. They can eat like shit, and it's fine. You know, is, is it though? Is it fine? I don't know. I think we Look should at Brian. Uh, Look at Brian. That dude could gain fifty pounds and still need to gain another ten. Uh yeah. Yeah. So we actually hired a new guy. I don't uh, catch up to him. New guy He's who's an, an intern um <laughs> in our uh in our sales department. Uh young Brian. He's a he's a Brazilian fellow. Brian Araujo. 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 And um there's a rumor. There's a rumor going around Mac Media that he's an e boy. So first of all, uh, Chase, I'm gonna need you to explain what an e boy is because I didn't know. Yeah, so an e boy is just like a dude. You know what an e boy is or no? You do? Yeah. He's like a. It's Brian like a pretty boy. boy. It's like a pretty boy who parts his hair down the middle, and he he has to 100 percent has to have a TikTok account, and he has to create like thirsty videos yeah. <laughs> on the TikTok, <laughs> like basically trying to get like underage girls like. Like mostly the girls Whoa. that like this. No, seriously, most of the girls that like this are between the ages of twelve and like fifteen. <laughs> because if you're a, like a grown ass adult and the you see this shit, e boy. What's the e stand for? A, a, like electric, electric boy. Yeah, like electric. Like just like an e boy, like an internet Dude, boy. We gotta get Brian. First of all, <laughs> Chase was actually trying to find his account. He's like, I know I'm gonna find. It. <laughs> I know. I'm, like I he's was in like, hiding. This dude is on TikTok. Like I look at him and I go, You're on TikTok. You know. And he could probably hear us actually right now talking about him because he's right there. Yeah, but right he's got his headphones us. in. So anyway, we Stop hired him. Stop sticking your hand in front of my camera. You know about that. You know we about hired that. him for um, sales. And, you know, we've always had difficulty in that department um, just because it's tough. It's a tough job, kind of. Um, it is. You're, can- you're on the you're front canvas- lines. Yeah, you're, you're like canvassing. You're on the front, you're on the front lines. lines. You're taking punish. You're taking heavy damage. But That's what you're doing. But it's... A great way it's an you have to do it because you have to get new business you know from outside of your own network yeah otherwise you'll never grow you gotta do that outreach um and you gotta find your niche so so we brought him on and uh he actually just started on monday of this week and um we are putting together several campaigns um to get so we can actually get started on this you know f- first of all you know end off the year strong um, with what we have, and then start uh, in January with like a very, very, very aggressive, so aggressive, uh, so aggressive. Like These guys approach. are gonna start coming in at seven a.m. Start banging out phone calls like three hundred calls a like day. Like he can just do fifty calls in an hour. Like that's what I'm expecting. Wow. So wow. Very, smiling and Arrugio. dialing. Arrugio. Smiling and Arrugio. dialing. Let's see how he does. I mean, I think that he really. Uh, I think he sees what an opportunity this is for him, and I'm hoping that. And I also think that. You know, he, he can take the heavy damage. Um, and I think that, you know, he can sound good on the phone. He can present himself well. He's not going to be like those Brazilian well. soccer players that, like, fall on the ground and act like they got shot. Is he? Like, oh! I After hope After a not. bad call? I hope not. After, like, a bad call? But, uh, yeah. But but we've we've been trying um, at this for a while. And so, you know, I think he's the man. Uh, All right. Well, 
I, I like Brian too. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna do well. Um, he just needs to stay off TikTok. He does. That's what he needs to do. But um, because that's gonna be a problem. That's gonna be his downfall, <laughs> basically. All right. Do you want to wrap this show up? Yeah, we're gonna wrap this show up here, folks. A little bit different um, than last time. Scott forced me to take an espresso shot last time. So he had to leave. And it made my entire body just set on fire. I was sweating, and my <laughs> my inner, my my stomach was like, "What did you do to me?" <laughs> Yeah, it did. Yeah. Um, all right. So why don't you go ahead and close us out, dude? I have these notes. I have these notes. So I don't even got it. This comes off the top. Um, go to www.themactalks.com. Oh, real, real quick. Shout out to the Danbury Chamber of Commerce for their new location on One Ive Street. We've got them back down on the green where they belong. Shout out to Tony Rizzo. Um, Tony Rizzo Sr. Tony Rizzo Jr. Um Rizzo Corporations. We went last night. It was a great time. Saw PJ um, doing an awesome job. Um, you know, you could tell that PJ really, really cares about Danbury. Um, they're grinding it out, man. Yeah, and they're, I mean, just they're really within, trying within the short period of time that he's been there. I feel like the chamber like has literally doubled what it was able to do before. You know what I mean? Um, it was a change that needed to happen, and uh, and PJ's been awesome. So I just wanted to just say that. Awesome um, turnout too. Oh my god! Everybody's place was supportive. Packed. Yeah, everybody's supportive. Place was packed. Did a little ribbon cutting. Welcomed them to their new office. So, big ups to the Danbury Chamber. Looking to do big things with them and uh, help them grow in 2020. So, Chase, go ahead. I have these notes. Um, go to www.themactalks.com if you're looking for fun, entertaining, engaging content that involves entrepreneurship entrepreneurship and business go to yeah, that we're website not your average show that's what we're telling no, you clearly we're not your average clearly show. we're gonna discuss we business we're gonna do it lighthearted. yeah right yeah light we discuss business topics lighthearted with a little bit of a flair to it we're a couple of Let's guys real. you can sit down have a beer with and chat about you know the economy um and, and shit like that. So Chase is going to say shit that is going to be way off the wall. He's going to make a lot, a lot of hot takes when you sit down and have that beer with him. He's going to say things like <laughs> Netflix going out of business. They're burning cash. Like he just throws out crazy <laughs> shit that makes no sense. But occasionally you can ground him and you can get some decent things coming out of his mouth. You know what I mean? He's a very educated edu edu lad. He went to Loyola. He graduated there. Uh, it's a Jesuit school. So, you know, I don't know what that means. I it think Jay-Z is that... a Jesuit. It just means that Young Hova. we get the job done. That's what it um, means. Go to our Facebook. Just search the Mac Talks. Go to yes, our yes. Instagram, at M-A-C-K Talks. Follow yes, us on yes. there. You, you can find all of clips of our show. Yes, yes. Go on iTunes. Leave us yes, a review. Yes. Every bit counts. You know that that's going to crank us up in the, in, the, in the rankings. So please help us out with that. Um, and we're on SoundCloud, Stitcher, Smart Radio. I'm a fun guy. Spotify. We're, we're everywhere, man. We're yeah. everywhere. Just search the Mac Talks. The Mac Talks podcast. Get you that content, boy. All right. All right. We'll see you guys next time. Episode 45. All right. Love you. Rap. <laughs>